man. You cannot marry a woman without gills. You're from two different worlds. Oh, I've wasted my life. Welcome back to the Thinking Critical Comic Book Podcast. It's time for the sixth edition of Slab and Raw, where we talk Six. about all things wow. comic book collecting. Got a great uh, setup of things to talk about. We've got a little controversy, mini controversy about some yeah, of the yeah. selling policies within some local comic shops. We're going to talk about some things to look out for, and maybe if it's time to walk away and find a better shop. We got a, a range of other topics to get into as well. First up is the co-host of Slab and Raw, the the proprietor of a comic shop in parts unknown. <laughs> Pele, how you doing? It's a beautiful morning in East Tennessee. Uh, just uh, sunshine and, and, and chirping birds and all that shit. Went to church this morning. It was fantastic. Had a great sermon. Uh, but uh, but yeah, we're here to talk about comics. We're here to talk about, talk about collectible comics and some and some all kinds of hijinks going on in the world of comics. So next up, we've got another retailer from. Berkeley, California, the man, well, half of the man behind Fantastic Comics. I believe there's a brother in there. The handsome one is what you called him. <laughs> uh, yeah, I call him the handsome one. I'm just the older one. <laughs> I'm the one that likes wrestling. <laughs> uh, yeah, I like, yeah, I'm the one who likes comic books. <laughs> He's the guy that does all the computer stuff. So if uh, if uh, the receipt ain't coming out right, talk to Jeff. <laughs> Absolutely. So that's uh, Yule Carter and Fantastic Comics in Berkeley, California. Finally, we've got the man with the most well manicured man cave in comic oh. book collecting. Ooh. Doc, how you doing? Yeah, it was just got, I just got a Brazilian on the man cave, and um, <laughs> whoa. Uh, oh wait, that's uh, oh we're talking about a different. You hired cave. a Brazilian yeah. housekeeper oh, oh, to oh, take care comic of comic book. Oh, 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 yeah, um, yeah. I'm I'm here and. I love talking comics. Yeah. All right, so this one comes straight out of social media. I saw some people talking about this, and I want to get into it myself because I have opinions on this, but I would like to hear from some retailers and somebody that's a little bit more into to collecting than I am in the form of Doc. And this is what was put up in someone's uh, back issue bends. It says, Ooh. due to the nature of the speculator's market, we reserve the right to check and reprice any and all back issues according to current going value." Jeez Pele, God. you are you are the big collector. You're all, you've been pushing back issues for for a long time now. As a oh. customer, if I came in and saw this, I don't want to be responsible for going in and finding all of your hidden gems that you forgot you put into your back issues. It's not my job to to, to go in and tell you you know find all the the stuff that's really mm -hmm. worth something so you can reprice it and gouge me at the cash register based on ebay prices yeah as soon as i saw this sign i would about face and walk right out and you would be 100 percent justified in doing it uh god that's bad i see it a lot uh, unfortunately i do see it a lot and i hear about it a lot and uh it's it's laziness it's laziness the the people that run the shop don't have the motivation to actually go through and uh, find those issues and reprice them appropriately or you know take care of their own inventory so they're just gonna let their customers do it for them if they happen to see hey this uh this book's actually worth fifty dollars and it's marked for ten dollars but I'm not gonna let it go for just ten bucks sorry dude let me check the eBay price oh it's fifty bucks how about that no no that's that's bullshit that is 100 percent bullshit and i don't care how hard you have things i don't care how bad it is for you you know this this is the kind of shit that makes people not want to ever go back to a comic shop and you know it's there's no excuse for it you know that's that's why that's why my manager and i stay late at night sometimes we go through we see what's hot we see what's moving we see what's exciting and we go and we reprice shit. you know we update it in the database we take care of our business and if somebody is that fucking lazy they can't do this then then you do not need to be their customer period and paley you specifically leave comics underpriced in your back issue ends. not all of them or half of them but you do yeah. strategically place them in there to go encourage people to go through them and go find the stuff that they want yep yep uh i'll you know hey this book's going up to 40 bucks well i've got it marked for 30 i've got it marked for 25 i'm gonna leave it you know or hey i've got this back issue i've got this book's worth 20 dollars. i'm gonna just throw it into the 50 cent bin 
And we'll see, you know, take the price label off of it and see if anybody notices, you know, leave it as a gem for them to find. I've got lots of books like that in the, in the bargain bins. And, uh, it makes people excited. It makes people happy when you should see the grins on their faces when they find a, you know, a $50 book for 50 cents. You know, you've never seen any so much excitement and that brings them back. And those people are happy customers and they'll, they'll come there every single week to go dig through your back issue bins, looking for gems, looking for hidden treasure. And uh, this just destroys all the excitement that any customer would have shopping in your store. What, what do you think you'll, yeah, um, <laughs> I, I totally agree. This uh, the one thing I'll say about this sign. Uh, the uh, owner of the comic store I used to work with. Uh, anytime we made a sign, he hated any negatives on the sign. So no, no uh, don'ts, no can't. This is a perfectly written sign. <laughs> <laughs> no negatives in this, other than the fact that it's entirely negative. I understand exactly how a person. So it's one thing to put a, an expensive comic in a, in, a, in a dollar bin or to leave it lower in price in the bin. There's many reasons why you might do that. But we've all felt the sting of something that we know is hot that we missed. And you, know, you kind of just put your, your tongue in your cheek and you know, ring them up because that's the price. Yeah. Why are you, uh, I mean, and I, I can't stand comic stores that don't price up their comic books that are on the floor. I like want to talk I, about that one next. <laughs> okay, you know, there's all sorts of things like that, but um, yeah, if you're gonna, if you, come on, just if pull it out of the bin. If you aren't gonna price it, just put it in the back room. I mean, there's so many things you could do to prevent this from happening without resorting to making the sign happen. Yeah, they got to put uh, it in their big know. boy pants, you know? Got to put it in your big boy pants. You got to stand by what you have out there. Hey, I mean, man, you go to Target and something's marked 35 cents instead of, th you know, $35. It's 35 cents, you know, until they, yeah. but, but they're on the horn telling everybody, get that off the floor now, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you get it for 35 cents because you're the finder, but the other people, no, not so much, but because they're going to have somebody on it. But, yeah. you know, you find that deal, you're going to get that deal. And yeah. it's it's because they don't want the bad reputation from it. Right, Doc? You know what? I don't want to undersell this. Right. Okay. Keeping on top of your inventory is hard work. Yeah. Specifically, if you have a lot of back, issue, back issues, mm -hmm. but it's your responsibility to manage your back issue inventory to make sure that it's priced correctly. Holding the customer accountability or accountable to your mistakes and inability to manage your own, you know, own back your your back issues, is uh, that's no bueno. No, you, it's just like Pele said, and I'm sure Doc will, will back us up on this. Going in and buying back issues is really fun, and if you find something that's it doesn't even have to be half off, you know, it could just be two bucks cheaper. You feel like you really found something, you know, and you're really happy. And then you go up and then they're like, oh, this is a $20 more book, you know. <laughs> now, there's customers that like to rub rub the nose in it and say, oh, they I do. found this and this uh -huh. is worth $25 and you got it marked for two fifty. dollars Yeah, we purposely leave them out there like that. Congratulations. That's what, I'm saying, that's at least. what you, that's what, uh, well, no, because they, they know you know they know now you know it's like it's and they congrats there's 40 more that you missed come back <laughs> yeah again. come back keep coming back maybe you'll find them next time yeah i don't know what do you say doc um you go into a comic shop you see that sign i walk out that's the end um, of it. yeah i mean look you guys pretty much covered it all i'm not your employee you're not paying me to do your inventory for you you're Preach. not paying me to, you know, dig through your, your boxes and organize it. Um, if you're too lazy to keep an accurate inventory and keep a location on where you're putting your inventory so that you can easily find it, I'm not being paid to do that. I am there to give you money, not to be paid. You have employees for that or yourself, but mm -hmm. that's not my job. I'm there. I'm there to find product, buy it at a price. Sometimes I'm because look, it, it, it all comes out in the wash. Anyways, there's times that people, you know, that there's people that buy books that you have priced that are overpriced. Mm -hmm. 
and there's the same people they'll find the occasional diamond in the rough in your in your back issue bins it all comes out in the wash Mm -hmm. over time um yeah you you might lose five bucks here but you're gaining 10 bucks there um you know paley's point about seeding their the back issue bins that's a it's a great strategy for your dollar bins and your your back issue bins to seed them with stuff because while they're looking at it while they find that ten dollar book that you have there for 50 cents they end up looking through and finding well this one's not ten dollars but it's i think it's still worth more than more than a buck or more than 50 cents i remember reading this i love this story yeah and or, or, yeah. And then you get to play on their nostalgia and mm-hmm. you get and then they buy 15 or 20 other 50 cent books that only cost you 10 cents. So you, you've you've just sold 50, you know, 20, 50 cent books that you weren't going to sell otherwise at, you know, for a I don't know. Uh, what would that be like a like a nine dollar profit? And versus the 50 cents that you probably paid for that $10 book, it comes out in the wash. Yep. And you made, you made another 10 bucks that you wouldn't have. Yeah. The excitement. So, it's, it's so much about the excitement for the customers. If you build that excitement and you make them want to keep coming back, you make, that's when it, that's when it works. Go ahead and miss. So I was also looking at the, you know, the, 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 the tweet thread, there was a lot of conversation going on there. Another thing that was being brought up, you alluded to it earlier is that customers are going into the back issue selections of certain comic shops and there's no prices when they ask you know what's the price of this comic we'll we'll uh, discover that when you come to the counter mm-hmm. they're bringing the counter the books they want up to the counter they're going on ebay and pricing them and in the moment then i'll buy it on the ebay yeah i mean the only i don't even like when uh, they go by guide that way it's just is very upsetting it's like I didn't expect it to be a 35 cent comic book, you know, I'm bringing it up, but I expected you to know what it cost and that you have to go through and do that is, I don't know, for me as a customer, it's very upsetting. There are times, you know, when I let people know that I, so in my store, we price everything. If it's not priced, it's not for sale. There are obviously things people will see in my store and ask about it, inquire. That's the only time I do the guide thing or maybe even an eBay situation, but it wasn't for sale initially. So I feel like that's okay. But this other stuff, this uh, grading it and pricing it. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. I feel like it's the exact same situation. Again, I'm not your employee. My job isn't to find things that you can then price. Your job is to price things. My job is to come in and find stuff I want to buy and buy it for the price that you already have listed. Yeah, what we had a situation like that with Batman Damned that it was so volatile. The price was so volatile that we we said we have copies of it. Inquire at counter. Mm-hmm. We wanted to sign up and sign up there. And I wasn't gouging. We weren't charging max price on these. And this was like two months after it came out. So you know we have copies of it. Let us know. We'll whether you want one graded, whether you don't want one that's not graded. Let us know. And I'd say, okay, what's the going? I I check not what's going on eBay, but I check the fair market value on it. And I'd look and I'd see, okay, it's selling for eighty bucks everywhere. I'll sell you a copy for seventy dollars. Mm-hmm. You know, and I thought that was fair. It was still cheaper than anywhere else they get it in town or on eBay. So, yeah, you don't have to pay shipping either. <laughs> yep. Or tax. Yeah, but if you're if just you... gonna go and, and look at eBay, why don't I just monitor the eBay prices and find a deal there? Yeah, you can yeah. set little exactly. <laughs> alarms when something comes in at the price that you want. And you know what like, I mean, why go to the comic tax. shop and have a good time? Yeah. And what I mean, let me reiterate. When I mean not by not paying tax is we give a ten percent off for all subscription customers. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. But the the point remains. You know, we're not your employees. Mm-hmm. If you don't, if you're not going to put in the effort to price things, I'm not going to put in the effort to go and dig through and find your your diamonds. It's just Sorry. so ballsy, too. I mean, it's just oh, well, I don't. It, it is because it puts you, it puts the customer in an in a shitty position when they come up to the the counter. They they come in and they're like, okay, well, you know, you, you when I dig through back issues, I'm like, okay. 
well, I've pulled out these 15 back issues and I did the, and I do some quick math in my head and I'm like, eh, it's 80 bucks. I don't really feel like spending that much today. So I'll put a couple of back mm-hmm. and, and, and I don't have to go up and tell the, the, the cus the, the guy at the counter. Oh, you know what? Forget about it on these three. Once he gives me my total. Yeah. Because <laughs> because now I'm I feel like an asshole, especially if I'm holding up a line, and now I'm deciding which books I was gonna buy. Yeah, when I could have done that ahead of time and just come up and said, "Here are the books I'm buying. Give me my total. I will give you money, and then I will leave." Yeah. Uh, one of the things about the sign is uh he's t- they're talking about speculators. Okay, so. You know, we're we're comic. So, are, how are you going to know it's a speculator? <laughs> oh, I got my key collector app, and I'm very excited to get this book everybody's talking about. I know when people have looked at their key collector and they don't have their phone out, and they're asking for you know this book that's super hot, or you have Nottingham number two, <laughs> you know mm-hmm. that kind of stuff. You know, are you a reader? You're a buyer, but. There's some people that just can't handle speculators, some stores, some owners or employees, and they hate the speculators. And the only reason why I get upset with them is because of ordering when it's something new on the shelf and I want my readers to get it and get a new customer that's going to read it month after month. Uh, That's when I get a little upset with speculators, but I just make a sign that says limit how many you can buy. But um, it's a... I feel bad when people don't like speculators and are so open and that they're willing to like make a sign like this or just openly say how much they hate them because speculating is a part of the industry, whether you like it or not. And uh, you should just, you should lean into it. It's fun. It's fun when you have a person like that. It sucks that you don't have all the books that key collectors saying is hot. You know, <laughs> it's shocking it's like, no, how many. We don't have it. No, we don't have it. You know, <laughs> it's shocking how many store owners really hate money. How many comic <laughs> shop owners? It is. It's shocking to me how many co- comic shop owners hate capitalism. They hate money, but but they love comics and they love interacting with the customers. And it's it. But you've got to have kind of a you got to have a fam- a familiarity. You got to have a friendship with both. Mm-hmm. And uh, so, yeah, you're right. You got to play into it. You know, you, you there's a there's a shop near me that has no pricing on any of their comics, any of their back issues whatsoever. And you you not know what you'd be paying for that comic till they, they you bring it up there and they look it up on eBay. Mm-hmm. And I didn't know that. And I saw one guy come in. He had like a stack of like 40, 50 back issues. And he was excited. And he brought them up to the front. And he's like, he's like, yeah, these are great. I, I saw these for cover price. And the guy's, oh, they're not cover. I've got to go check the prices on all these. And the guy just looked. And you, I could just see him completely deflate inside. <laughs> and he just left them on the counter and turned around and went home. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I'm yeah like, that's crazy. But people are always going to try and get you get over one on you when you're a, a store owner. Like I remember my dad and I used to go to football games. He would bring his buddy from work and we'd always have to stop at every Walmart, like on the way to the university of Missouri football games. And he would go to the baseball card aisle and he had like a, a fucking, like a portable, like a uh, weight to where he could right. weigh the, oh, nice. the, the baseball <laughs> card packages because if they were a special card, they would weigh a little bit more. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, this one has a this one has a jersey on it. <laughs> yeah, it has a little piece of Babe Ruth's bat or whatever. Or it was a hologram card. Yep. Yes, and that's the, it, yep. it. was annoying. And I, if if I was a collector of baseball cards, it, you know, you're like ruining this for a kid. That's oh, <laughs> but adults do that. We ruin everything for kids, right? That's like Magic the Gathering now is doing that because one foiling is heavier than another type of foiling in the magic cards and because there's got cold foils and regular foils and the regular full cards are heavier than the cold, new cold foils. And so people are taking in their little digital scales and they're weighing the fucking boxes now again at Walmart like that. And I saw a guy doing that and I was just like, and he didn't even buy the damn scale. He just took the scale from the bathroom, from the, from the bathroom. <laughs> wow. This guy has a little scale that you put it on there and it had like the little like weight. Clip. Well, I manual. think it was a food scale anyway, but it was yeah. a little tiny, you know, that goes down into like quarters of a gram or tenths of a gram or something. And he's going through and he's weighing the fucking boxes of the cards. And I'm like, I'm like, is it really that bad? 
and he just kind of looks at me. <laughs> he, I guess he didn't understand what I was saying. He's yeah, it's bad, man. There's a difference here, and you know, blah blah. And then he, then he realized he was telling me his secret, and he just kind of clams up and he goes back to weighing the cards again. I'm like, that's just sad, dude. But so I've, we've heard Yule and, and Pele say, you know, you know, you gotta work with speculators. But as somebody that enjoys reading comics, as most of my viewership are comic book readers or collectors, doc, speculators are the worst. They ruin the hobby for people that are just there to enjoy the comic books. Yeah, yeah I guess. Um, <laughs> they look, drive I got, up know, the price of your X Men's you're looking to they, buy. They, man. they do. They drive <laughs> up. They drive up certain prices. They drive down other prices. Yeah. Um, look, they're 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 a part of any sort of collector world, and any sort of collecting. You know, it doesn't matter if it's stamps or model trains or comic books or hot wheels cars you know there's there's always going to be those At people stamp collectors don't ever want to use the stamps you know what yeah, i mean I, I get it. <laughs> um, but but you know what i mean like I it's, it's, it's just part of it. it it's something that we have to accept and, and I, yeah but you know what i feel like this this particular sign is attributing to speculators um because they want to just pass the buck they they don't want to take the blame for making this policy responsibility of their own fucking inventory it's your job son exactly they don't want to take responsibility and they want to pass the blame so that all the people that come in there blame speculators when it's really just them being too fucking lazy absolutely and i'll tell you what they have the speculators now speculators i've we we sat down and we figured over a over a year time looked over all the you know the people that were buying five and six issues only speculators are buying five issues of a comic book i'm sorry right. you know that's, well, that's just the way it is be getting every cover uh, no they're buying five of the same cover the same that's comic book that's the that's that's a, that's a speculator and that was equal to over a third of the new comics we sold were multiple issues of the same cover of the same issue huh, really? and i've been saying that on the channel that those the are speculators is is, is a, is a you know, appealing over, a to right now. over a third yes. of them that means i would have lost over a third of sales if i didn't have speculators Mm-hmm. Just think of how much more sales you would have got if Marvel and DC were putting out a lot of good books. Yeah, but th- that combined to. with speculators, <laughs> that combined with speculators would yeah. be even better. Yeah, but were- I don't mind my speculators. I love my speculators <laughs> because I know how they operate and I, I'm, I'm aware of how they operate, what they're doing. And I just play into it. I, I lean into it because I'm like, yeah, that's going to sell. So I know this guy's going to want 10 copies of it. Man, you know, I and- am getting deja vu in this conversation. <laughs> Yeah, if I could, it? if I could, um, if I, if I as a store owner could replace my speculators with good comic books that, and and new customers for those comic books, I mean, every store owner, including myself, would be like, yeah, but could I add the speculators also? Yeah, <laughs> everybody gets deja vu. Everybody, everybody gets greedy. You're I talking mean, about deja vu because of the '90s, right? <laughs> Well, yeah. oh, is that what you're saying, Doc? Doc no, a little bit of that, but I, yeah. feel, I feel like we've had this conversation. Yeah, that too. <laughs> but I understand what Wes is saying. They do make the they do make the collecting market muddy. They they cause they cause runs on stuff where readers can't get stuff, you know. And part of that is one, the speculators. Yes, is this the fall of speculators? Two, it's because the store owners are not really they're not really <laughs> ordering as much as they should. And uh, knowing that the speculator market is out there, so and, that, and that's the thing I'm, I'm saying: like, lean into these speculators, talk to them, owners, or get your store, mm-hmm. you know, store employee to do that. These guys or gals will give you information that you might not be paying attention to. You know, um, it can't all be go collector or uh, go collector key collector or whatever the hell they're called. You know, it's sometimes there's Facebook you know, groups and exactly whatever else and is you going know. On there's conversation and you know you're talking about something that's going to be happening and it clues you in before those other things happen and maybe you know if you have like a bunch of that one issue that we're talking about and then you can like work accordingly yeah exactly this guy named casey is the worst of our speculators and 
my my manager mike calls him up and says this is getting hot i've got such and such amount of issues i know you're going to be coming in how many are you going to want and he, call, he just calls him right up says, how many yeah. of these are you going to want that way i can i know that you know i know that you're not going to be taking somebody else's stuff i can just go ahead and put it aside for you and uh you you've got to you know i know that's a pain in the ass i know that that's you know you shouldn't have to deal with that but it it works so much better when you allow for it instead of just letting them do it to you you work it out with them and as a story you're what you're doing is you're saying come in spend your money here you know yeah <laughs> it's it's what a and, and 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 comic stores are you know small for the most part it's yeah that that's the community <laughs> that's it, the conversation that you have with the employee or the shop owner and it, uh you can call them you know <laughs> in, in fairness though i i think part of the appeal to this the speculator is feeling like they're getting something over on everyone else yeah um, that's so, true so whenever whatever you're like directly openly working with them and like accommodating them they don't get that same thrill no that might and be that, true and that's what's great about it that's partly what's great about it because maybe they won't be so predatory then they're kind of like oh okay right. yeah, they'll well, just they'll just go somewhere where they can get that thrill. that's fine they won't get it as cheap but that's fine but it's one of the interesting things about you know comic book collecting is there's different mindsets and certainly you have the investment collector that, that sees their comic book collection as this future investment that's accumulating value over time and sometimes you take a swing and you, you have a miss but sometimes you take the swing and you got you know 10 you know gems just waiting to to make a lot of money as it appreciates value uh Pele, mm-hmm. how do you do it Is, are you an investment minded collector or, or are you hybrid or are you just in collecting how do, how do you see your collection it depends, man. It's uh, some books are some books are an investment, but they're but I love the investment. You know, I, it's like you know, it's something that I really believe in. You know, the best investment is something that you truly believe in, and uh, I believe. I in like these. the stonk. Yeah, I like the stonk. <laughs> the stonk is good. You know, you know, I'm an ape. I am a hundred percent comic collecting ape, and uh, it is just yes, those books. Journey into Mystery 83, you know, Avengers number one, Amazing Fantasy 15. I believe in these so much that I've got like a large amount of my investment money into comics. And uh, it's like Rudy from Alpha Investments. He's got a huge amount of his money into Alpha and Beta Magic cards because he believes in them. But then there's other tiers. It's just like, you know, uh, you know, this, this, this is cool. This is cool. It may, it may stay up. It may go down. I don't really consider that investment grade, but it's good to get. It's, it's good to diversify into, and it's a good collectible. And, uh, they, they, you know, they probably will go up in value, but, uh, it just depends, man. There, there is, there is a diverse range within the, you know, there's, it's like I explained to other people, there are millions of stocks out there and not all of them are blue chip stocks. Some of them are just regular XYZ company. They make rod bearings, you know, and, you know, they, you make, you know, you're probably going to make money investing in that stock. You may not, you know, it's a, it's a risk, but, you know, it's not blue chip, but it's still a stock. And uh, there's a lot of comics that are just like that too. Well, I mean, stocks are different than commodities. I mean, a stock is essentially you're gambling on future earnings, correct? Mm-hmm. Yeah, but you know that you're you're gambling also in comics because that you think that this mid range character might make it to the MCU. They may make it onto a TV show. They may have a new maxi series written about them later on. You know that's a, that's you're buying a portion of that character's first appearance. You know because there's only a limited amount of them out there, and so you are buying a share of that character's first appearance. You know if you think about it that way. So, and there's some comics have more shares than others. So, and the older the comic gets, the less shares are out there. You know, if that makes but you, any you sense. you know, it's physically, at least you have it in your hands, right? <laughs> Absolutely. And Nobody that's what can I love. Truly it. screw you over out of it. You yeah, can hold like on I, to it if you want. I was telling people right now, we're going to see, we're going to see a time where, you know, like I was talking about Journey to Mystery 83, you'll never see them again in the public. There's going to be a time where the all the all those books like that are bought up completely by the hedge investors, by the big by the big brokerages, and you're never going to see them again in private collections. And they probably you know? don't trade for other comic books, do, do they? 
No, you know, they, <laughs> you're never going to see these comics again in private collections after a certain point because they're just going to pay any amount of money it takes to own all of that first appearance. And yeah, it, I'm telling people buy those books right now while you still can. I know they're elevated in price. Maybe wait for them to settle down some, but buy those books because they're not going to be around in a 40, 50 years. And they're all going to have the only thing you're going to have is the the digital asset of them. The, you know, they're going to have an NFT. You're going to have you're going to be able to buy an NFT of one of these books, and that'll be the closest you can ever get to it again. So, Doc, I, I do want to get your perspective on this. I know you have an interesting story. I believe that you eventually you had a comic. You, I don't know that you thought of it as an investment at the time, but you were able to flip that essentially for for your house. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, basically. Um, uh, when I was 10, I uh, took a bunch of uh, like communion and birthday money that I had accumulated and, buy, and I bought a relatively low grade um, Amazing Fantasy 15. Um, it was a couple hundred bucks. It was like 500 bucks at the time. It was reasonably priced. This is before there was an enormous amount of money. We're about the it, same age. Yeah, I know. I mean, this was like 1989, 1990. 20 or 30 Millennium Falcon toys. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that would have been uh, five uh, uh, USS Flag toys or, um, That's you know. That's G.I. Joe. Oh, yeah, yeah, like, like, uh, oh, like you'd about what you'd it, probably have about, it. it'd be about 200 G.I. Joe figures. Um, of Transformers. That's yeah. pretty ball, Doc. That's pretty baller, man. You hey, know, I, at fifteen really? years old, that's pretty baller. No, that's, that was that's at like awesome. ten. Yeah, he's, I was yeah, 10. That, Oh, ten. That is really baller, man. That 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 um, is that is awesome. So but, you had no CGC, you know, had no CBCS, yeah. no PGX at the time, but you no. knew to, to keep it in good shape. <laughs> yeah, I, I I wanted to have that first appearance of Spider Man. Spider Man was my favorite character. X Men was my favorite series. Um. And so I bought it and my parents, I mean, they, they basically told me I was out of my fucking mind <laughs> and you know, they're like, you're an idiot. I can't believe you did that. You, know, you need to take it back. That you kind of, a thing. Couple like, of Nintendos or something. Man. Yeah. <laughs> like they're like, we're never, you know, this is so stupid. And I kept it and I kept it and I kept it and I, you know, I'd pull it out from time to time and look at it and kind of like, just check it out. And Your greasy they, little pizza fingers? Hell no. It was already bagged and boarded, dude. I don't think I... I think I pulled that... I think that book saw, like, actual oxygen wow. twice in the time that I owned it. And you said um, you pulled it out. I thought you were pulling out the no, bag to read it. No, no, no. no. I, I read it. I, I, I opened it one time. Like, a two times total. Yeah. Um, How were the and, staples? <laughs> they were actually still pretty firm, nice. um, and, but I was, I was super gentle with it. And I, I knew that this was, you know, special. Uh, yeah. Something special. And I just, but I put it away and I, I stored it in, you know, well preserved area, like climate controlled and everything like that to keep it in decent shape. And then when I was about, you know, 29 30 I, I i knew that i still had the book i was just like okay i'm looking towards buying a house now and you know uh this was now granted this is in like 2010 um you know the market is on houses is is really low but the problem is unless you had like 20 or 30 percent uh for a down payment you couldn't get a mortgage period mm -hmm. Um, and so I'm like, okay, well, you know, actually putting that together, I, I'm, I'm still a little bit off from, and I looked around and I said, you know, I wonder what this is grades out at. And it, it ended up grading out at a 3.0 and I put it on the market and I sold it. Um, and I, I, I don't want to say how much for. No. Um, you got the down payment, no. but, but it, was it, good. it 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 took care of my the. It, it would have been my entire down payment. I'll put it that way. Awesome. Um, and so I ended up putting a bigger down payment than I expected on my house. And, awesome. Um, you know, 
So to this day, I still kind of do I regret selling it a little bit because I'm that hybrid. I'm the the collector and the investor. Um, Now, was I thinking about investing in it at, at 10 years old? No, but I was thinking there's no way that this is going to go down. It, it, you know, there's no way I'm going to lose money on this book. Even at 10, I knew that, but I wasn't, I didn't know I, it would, you know, basically buy me a house at some point. Yeah, it was a happy accident, but that's something where a collection turns into an investment, Pele, where exactly. it kind of flips the script over, over time as it appre- appreciated in value, it became something else. Yeah, my, my dad is another person I can point to. See, I, I, I was born into comic book privilege because my dad had a monster collection that he got partially from his uncle. The Golden Age books came, the Golden Age Supermans and actions and stuff, a lot of those came from his uncle and were passed down to him. And then he added to that with, with Marvel, with Avengers. You know, Avengers 1 through 48 came from him, uh, from dad. Uh, you know, uh, ASM 1 through 60. You know, and he, he was really picky very picky about condition and uh and yeah and he, but he was not an investment collector he was i love these books i love comics superman was his favorite character and he didn't care what they were worth he wanted them and he always had a rule that if i had to pay more than 40 dollars or 50 dollars, i think it was for a comic it's too expensive but you know he he did he you know back in 1968 he would he would pay fifty dollars for a comic book because if it's something he really really wanted and uh but and he wasn't like that though he was not investment he was not looking at it as an investment and it probably worked out for the best for him because there's a lot of times that we can't went through financial hardship as kids you know we grew up very very poor at a lot of times because you know union would go on strike something would happen and we needed money but he didn't look at them as a a sellable thing they were part of his collection and he was going to save them for me and uh so it just means he would work harder you know rather than sell them and um but and i and and he deserves all the praise and glory for it because you know now it's getting to be you know his his collection is going to be pedigree collection and that's that's pretty awesome. What do you think, Yule? What, uh, what where do you, these people land? Uh, well, I mean, as, as far as like collecting for myself, it's a reader's collection for the most part. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I've gotten in and out of collecting for various reasons. Uh, never have I really. I mean, I have a few expensive comic books, and some you know sometimes you know they weren't initially, and. I've been going and collecting some things like I had to get the black cat's first appearance and I was looking through and I'm like, I don't have a black costume Spider-Man, you know, those kind of expensive comics I've actually paid for, but for the most part, it was like, as they were coming out or just something I'm interested in. And like, if you, you know, how people get their like a storage center or storage area stolen and they, you know, I lost all my Spider-Man and stuff like that lost thousands of dollars worth of comic books you would just be stealing really good reads <laughs> <laughs> no, but, i mean i have thor you know first beta ray bill you know that's an expensive ish comic yeah. book. you know i've got that whole run you know so like that's good stuff but nothing that's like you know af 15 uh <laughs> You know. So speaking about that, Paley, let's say you're you're in Doc shoes. You're a young man. You acquire Amazing Fantasy 15, and as you become older, you realize that your collection has turned into an investment. It's something that has an enormous amount of value to it. What steps do you need to, to take to to do a, a assure that investment? And, and you get to keep it. Not, you know, imagine you want to get it at slab, but you need to get it insured. Should, should you be getting like a, a safety deposit box? How are you going to you know, ensure that, that uh, you keep that in as good a condition and, and in the proper hands as possible? Yeah, there's tiers. Uh, uh, there, there are tiers involved to it. Uh, I think that slabbing is an option, uh, but really, unless it's like old Silver Age or Golden Age, slabbing is not a requirement. Unless the book is really delicate and has, has other issues where handling it you know, could, could possibly damage it further, uh, you don't have to go slabbing, but you do 
you do need to get really good boards and some mylar and uh and provide for a clean environment for that comic to live in and don't put it somewhere where it's real humid where it's real hot keep it in a dark dry cool place you know so you can you can keep an eye on it and if it does get it to be so where you know like say you got tens of thousands of dollars you want to add it to your homeowner's insurance policy or get collector's insurance uh you want and it's not expensive it is not expensive because you know very unlikely that comic books are going to get stolen it's probably going to be changing sometime in the future but uh you know house fire is probably the most damn you know the most likely thing that could possibly happen to a comic collection as far as detrimentally uh flooding possible but uh, it's cheap it's cheap to insure a collection of comics unless you get crazy with it uh and then we're not getting it appraised yeah get it absolutely get them appraised no you have to to get the you have to get them appraised to get the insurance to really cover it properly the um, um, just just to point no, out um the homeowner's insurance option i do not generally recommend um because mm. for in a lot of ways they're very collecting on that policy is difficult i've heard a lot of horror stories um, even with a current appraisal, current inventory, they like to try to give cover price, uh, yeah. which if you have a shit ton of modern Drek might be good. But if you got a bunch of, uh, you know, valuable Silver Age, they're giving you 10 cents. Well, yeah, it's crazy. Eight cents. Um, you know, your X-Men one might be eight cents, but you're, you know, dark hawk number one is a dollar fifty yeah so uh good luck <laughs> yeah well you have to specify the add the collectible rider onto that policy and then they'll they'll treat you better it's but yeah you want to get collect you want to get collectibles insurance heritage and several of them offer that now and uh and then but then say you get even bigger into it you really get more into comics you can reach a place where you are uninsurable and uh and i've run into that you know there i'm uninsurable as far as the you know the 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 main part of my collection uh there's just you know they will not under any circumstance lloyd's of london you know won't insure it uh so you you get to that certain point and then you're talking about safety deposit boxes and uh, then you get to the point where the banks don't want you to have your comics in their in their vault because it's like that's too much money in one sh in one you know in one deposit box or even in several boxes and then you've got to go with the vaults and you've got to go with the you know with your own security systems and stuff like that and you know that's when it gets crazy but for most people you're going to be looking at a policy you're going to be looking at an insurance policy or a safety deposit box and both are really really good options and uh the safety deposit box is not going to if you lose the comic out, out of a safety deposit box it gets robbed or something like that you're just out there's no insurance on that unless you take out insurance privately uh so um but uh there are levels there uh but definitely get them get them sealed up in mylar take care of them properly store them really well and you take care of them and later on if you need if you need money if you need financial assistance they'll take care of you all right, so Pele, on the appraisal. I'm Joe Schmuckatelli. I'm getting my appraisal done for the first time. How often do I need to get that update if I want to, you know, keep keep my insurance and everything up to date to where I'm going to get my money back? Is that a would, yearly thing? I would say at minimum, at minimum every five years. Minimum every five years. Yeah, every five years on vintage comics. You know, that's not going to cover you for like brand new hot, the hottest books and stuff like that, or in sudden market surges like we've seen in the last two years or in the last year and a half. This would be a good time to go and get your get your collection reappraised because of the surge that we saw. But under normal circumstances, I would say bare minimum every five years. I so. also highly, highly, highly recommend getting yourself a uh, piece of software for tracking your collection inventory mm -hmm. something we also like need to have pictures right of up to date of all your stuff yes, yes um, absolutely. I, I highly recommend using something like the collector the CLZ app or one of those comic book, realm. 
comic book realm, but use and then upload your own scans or photos rather than use the stock images. But right. That 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 may that may be a good assistance. And that's what helps with slabbing is because you know what that grade is. You absolutely know what that grade is. That book, you got an AF-15 and a 4.0. You know what that 4.0 is worth. You take pictures of that slab, get the serial number down, put it into your app that, that also stores that information online, and you, you're, you're protected if you have insurance. Interesting stuff. So, you know, we're just talking about, you know, what if your collection goes way up? What if you're like me? You're kind of a new collector, and all of a sudden you've seen these sky, the these first appearances of Skyrocket Pele. What the hell am I going to do? How am I supposed to enjoy the collecting hobby? Maybe I want to be a collector, but I'm not ready to step into AF15 like Doc was as a 10 year old. You know, it's baby steps. Uh, how do you get around that? Are you looking for, you know, uh, key storylines with these characters? Are you looking for second appearances? What the hell? There are lots of options there. Uh, one, you can just go low rent. And uh, oh, I want to, I want to, uh, you know, I want a Werewolf by Night thirty two. You know, I, I really, really want that. You know, it. Well, then you want Moon Knight's first appearance, but you don't want to pay the money. Go and you run. And you don't mind low grade. Go get a one point oh. Go get a one point five. It's still going to be worth a lot of money. There's all ranges of you know in the collector's sphere that that you know are fine with lower grade books. And that's an option. Go low grade. There's low grade in that respect. Low grade is better than no grade. Now, I don't like that term, but in those instances where it's key, big key characters, big key books, it does ring true. And uh, another option, second appearance. Yeah, you would go with the second appearance. You would also go with the first solo appearance, like in like you know, uh, like Marvel Panther preview. Yeah, shows up. Yeah. Fantastic Four. Yep. Or, you know, first solo Marvel premiere, you know, magazine, you know, Marvel preview magazine or, or Marvel premiere solo series, you know, that first, you know, those are other options that are available. And uh, those are a lot cheaper than the first and second appearances. You know, you could step down for those and you can always look in the in the in the grade ranges of all those too until you find I can afford this. I can, you know, this is in the grade that I want. This is what I want to get. And, uh, you know, that that's that's really that's really the key thing there is you don't want to you want to be able to afford the hobby that you love but you don't want to go so far that you can't eat <laughs> i see too many people go that route too they they go nuts and they're like oh man i've got to get oh well, i want this and i want that and i want this and i want that and pretty soon they're buying on leverage mm -hmm. they're buying with credit and they're having you know that 12 months that 12 months no interest is is over and you're having to start paying interest on your purchases and soon you know you're paying interest on those comics you love and you know you're eating into any future profits you could possibly get and uh that's that's when you've gone way too far and people end up having to sell them back to the shops people end up having to sell them back on ebay and you know they make nothing or they end up in the hole on it and you just don't want to be in that situation that's what it is. a lot of it is, is baby steps when I hear from people, Doc, is you want to know what your goal is ultimately. And maybe today I can't get that 5.0 AF15, but maybe I can get the 1.0. And in a couple years, you, know, you trade that in and maybe you upgrade to this and this, and then eventually you get your way there. Yeah, um, you, you can work your way up. You can, that's, that's always one way. I mean, like my X-Men, one 1 1.5 i may end up upgrading that at some point um mm. i i don't know um i'm happy with the one that i have but maybe down the line i have the extra disposable income maybe there's a 3.0 there there's a pretty decent that, value yeah um maybe maybe i can maybe i i find a decent price on something and i'm able to move mine for a reasonable price and and then you know, make some of my money back. I, I don't know. Maybe um, find a raw copy that's really, really nice that you it, know is higher than a 1.5. Exactly. You know, I could go that route. Um, and I'm the one then making the, you know, getting paid the uh, the CGC tax mm -hmm. on, on it instead of who I'm buying from. Um, that That's an option too. But in, in a lot of ways, for instance, myself, I, I bought an X-Men 2 that was my 
first X Men book under in in like the one through ten. I bought an X Men two long before I bought an X Men one because I couldn't afford the X Men one at the time. Uh-huh. So <clears throat> I bought a two. I had a great. I, I got what I thought was a very, very good deal. I ended up getting it graded. It graded out at a 5.0. Um, so it, it ended up grading a lot higher than I expected. And now, you know, so I, I did go the second appearance route since I couldn't afford the first appearance. Mm-hmm. Yeah, my uh, my brother-in-law, Mark, he's an he's awesome dude. You know, he's always, he's always, he collects comics along with me. He's a lot, a lot of fun with the hobby and uh, could not afford, his favorite character is Daredevil. Could not afford Daredevil number one. And I'm like, I'm like, yeah, I'll be you know, even off. Well, I'll, I'll buy you one and you can pay me back. You know, I'll get you one. And you can pay. No, no, I want it. I don't, I don't want to do that. I want to buy it. And so I found him a really nice Daredevil number two. It was a 7.5. Beautiful book beautiful red cover on it uh it's it's the second appearance of electro too so it's you know and it's got a cameo of the thing of, of all people of all characters but uh awesome awesome book and he bought it when it was super cheap i think he paid like 300 dollars for it and uh, now that same book is like worth two grand for a 7.5 and you know that worked out so well for him and then later on down the road i was like dude Daredevil's about to explode. Daredevil one is going to go absolutely insane. This was when I was telling Doc a year ago. I said Daredevil's too cheap, man. Daredevil one is way too cheap, and it's going to go insane. Yep. And I was we've saying, seen that. <laughs> and oh yeah. And I said you need to go now. He says, well, what can we do? And I said, I I found you a five point five. It's it presents like about a seven. It's got a little stain on the back. Beautiful book. You need to get that book. And he said, "Okay, we'll go. We'll work it out." And uh, so he worked out twelve months, no interest. And he, you know, we went in and bought it. And uh, I acquired it for him. He bought it. You know, he got it all paid off in like eight months. And uh, and now that book is worth five times more than he paid for it in just a year. And he's smiling. He's smiling, you know, that book is like, he's got it really, he's got it right there on his, in his man cave, sitting up on the, you know, on, on his prize possession zone. And I said, yeah, how you liking, how you liking that, how you liking that $50,000 comic sitting up there? <laughs> and he's like, he's like, I like it a lot better than I only paid about 10. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's exactly it. I mean, I'm sitting here looking at my, my X-Men one, that 1.5 mm-hmm. that I bought for like, you know, I, I paid a little high at like 2,600 about three, two and a half years ago. Yep. Um, almost three years ago now. And you know what? It's a $9,000 book today. Damn. Yep. I didn't mean to ride you over it at the time, doc, but I was like, doc, you, you got to do, you, you really got to do something. He's like, yeah, I know, I know, I know. I want the book. I just, do you need, no, no, you need to yeah. do something now. <laughs> I, I knew that I needed to buy. I needed, I, I knew I needed to pull the you trigger, did. And, did. and I did. You did it. You did it. And the only people that, that can't, the, the people that are the, you know, they're in the worst shape are the ones that knew better. They didn't do it. And now, now sometimes that's out of reach. Now they're looking for the second appearances. Now they're looking for the the first solo appearance and stuff like that. There's no grade that's too low that they can afford. And I feel bad for those people. And the only option after that is you've got to wait for the market to cool down and hopefully those books will drop. The problem is, is those really huge keys, I don't think we're ever going to see a big appreciable drop in them again. Not for the massive keys like the the X Men ones, Basic Phase Fifteen. You know all those big blue chip keys. I don't know if we'll ever see them really reset again down to a where they were. They'll never go be back with where they were, but I don't think we'll ever see a big appreciable drop again. You don't have to feel bad for you and I. We missed the mark. No, no, we, no. We didn't think that. about what was going on. We're still going to be good because we're going to watch wrestling. That's right. <laughs> we still have. Uh, we got Roman Reigns. We still have digital and um, and uh, trade paperbacks. Also. Now, now, like, 
that AF that 300, uh, yeah. the ASM 300, you will really want an ASM 300. Uh, they're going to reset. Really do. <laughs> they're going to reset. That's I a book that so. there's there's a shitload of them out there. There's a Just ton of ASM 300s. Wait, wait, yeah, it's going to come down again because there's so many of them out there. It is going to come back down again. So. <clears throat> We need to talk about about that next time, Pele, is what goes in, what what actually establishes the value of the comic, like the Mm -hmm. the different things that go into it at rarity, uh, you know, the the prestige of the character, the, you know, the age of the book and and all those kind of factors into it. You know, what, 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 what events happen? I will make them uh, Yeah, well, we can can rank it up. (laughs) At some point, at some point, we need to come up with the comic value algorithm. Yep. <laughs> but here are all of your variables. Yep. A plus B divided by C squared. People would <laughs> yeah. like that. Oh yeah. 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 And uh, I bet, I'm betting and we the can actually rare, figure it out. The awesome super rare double first appearance. Yeah, those are great when you have double key, triple keys, where it's not just well, a first appearance. Three first it's, appearances in X Men number one this week. I know it. I know it. New mutants, you know, new mutants number one. That's a great book. It's cheap. And it's got a lot of first appearance, the the first graphic novel appearance, you know, new Marvel graphic novel number four, you know, huge number of first appearances in it. You could still buy them for a hundred dollars. What the hell? Go out giant, and buy that damn book. Giant size number one. I Absolutely. mean, that's like a quadruple uh, key because you got yep. Storm, Nightcrawler, Colossus, and Thunderbird. Although Thunderbird really doesn't count. Wah, wah. What about uh? But, X Men like what one twenty nine is that what it is? Yeah, with Kitty and Emma. Yeah, yeah. damn. Go west. So when is the time if you if you're missing out on these first appearances? When do you say you know screw it? I'm going to start buying story arcs. You know, I, I want the you know I want the you know uh, you, Days I of would, Future Past. It's only two issues. Two issues. It's sure, not yeah. going to be anything about first appearances. You can probably get in there and get a pretty cool story arc for in good. Get story. it now. Get it yeah, now. Yeah, get it now because that's not getting cheaper. <laughs> it's not going to go cheaper. It is in the lull. It, for that for that two-book series, it is in the lull right now, and I have a lot of customers that are going, okay, this is the time to buy it, and then I say, yeah, you need to go look now. But and, there's so uh, many ways to skin a cat, Paley. That's the point. You don't yeah, have to just absolutely. key on on the first appearances. You can go find the story arcs that you love, maybe uh, certain yeah. stories that highlight a, an additional character, a side character that you think is – is better than everything else. Some people like Alfred better than Batman. Yeah. Uh, oh, you know what's really weird? That highlight that character. We have seen an explosion of uh, One More Day. The hated the hated issue of One More Day. People are going out and really looking for it now. We sold out. I had like 15 copies of it in the back issue bin. I think it was like 10 or $15, depending on grade. And they're all gone. They all disappeared because I think people are saying it, thinking that it's going to be undone. And so yeah. that book's going to be hot because it's going to be undone. It's going to be like a two issue arc where it's just, you know, this is what this is the bad thing. This is get this is the bad thing being rectified. I think it's going to be one issue in, in ASM 74 because yeah. yeah. the next three are dealing with uh, Sinister War. And you see Spider-Man with MJ and she's got that bouquet of flowers. I don't know specifically that they're going to undo one more day, which is my hope. I think they just might do a shotgun wedding. Yeah. But uh, it'll it'll be they're what it'll be what undoes. It. It'll be what yeah. undoes one more day. If even if it's not magically undone, mm-hmm. it'll be situation circumstance that undoes it. So that would be a good thing. I know Doc's excited mm-hmm. about that. We got a video uh, that just came up on the channel. I think yesterday where we talked about that, Doc. So I don't know you. How are you you collecting comics? Yeah, is that, uh, is that what well, you're doing? You know, uh, story arcs, so, appearances. Most comic books are finite. You know, or at least the the volume that you're reading. So let's say you're really in a a She-Hulk, Savage She-Hulk. And number one's really expensive, but what you might want to do is start from the back. You know, those are sometimes the hardest ones to actually find. The other ones might be the more expensive ones, but the really hard ones are the end of the series. So if something only went like 30 issues, you might want to start thinking about 30, 29, 28, and start working your way back instead, especially if this is like some, are you collecting for the one issue or are you collecting for the whole series? Because, uh, 
you know, it might it might prove to be a lot more difficult to get that three dollar book than you really think it should be. <laughs> uh, yeah, the yeah. longer a series runs on, the lower the the lower the uh, distribution numbers on mm-hmm. it typically. So you know, yeah. that's Savage Savage She Hulk She Hulk number one. Let's say that number several times but uh savage she hulk number one you know had four hundred fifty thousand copies and it's out there distributed and it's out there but but yeah. the final issue had like 85 yeah and, and that was a no, you know, 85 total 85,000. 85,000. 85, <laughs> yeah, well, and that's nothing. Yeah, it's as now. valuable as collectible paley so people probably didn't keep it in as good a condition maybe they just discarded it yeah, it's not worth a whole lot. Those aren't worth a whole lot either, you know, but they are harder to get and they are hard to find in high grade. So yeah, I, so if they're slab 9.8, anything's expensive. And <laughs> <laughs> I, Sorry. I always, I always look at it like this. You, you take what I've always found is some of the, some of the big books, some of the more expensive books, they're going to keep going up a little bit, but the it's try to knock out the undervalue cheap rare part portion of the of it because if that title ever gets hot those are the ones that you're going to lose your shirt trying to find because there's good you, you might spend an extra hundred dollars or two hundred dollars or even five hundred dollars on one book but you might be spending getting nickel and dime to death on those rare lower print run books later Mm -hmm. in the run that are harder to find. Yeah. Yeah. One of the, like spending a lot of money on an expensive book, it's a, it's a hit. But when you spend $10 on a $2 book, that really pisses you off. (laughs) Absolutely. It does. $20. You're pricing this like it's slabbed. It's a raw book. Yeah. There's a, the, I keep I keep going back to that Moon Knight series from the from the eighties, because uh-huh. uh, it's just amazing. It's an amazing series. Number thirty eight, final issue of that uh, final issue of that run, is limited, very limited distribution on it. You know, they they sold thirty two thousand copies of Moon Knight number thirty eight, and this was back in nineteen eighty four when you know many, that many copies could get just like destroyed in shipping. You know, on the print run that size back then, mm-hmm. you know that's 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 almost like non-existent in terms of distribution. But number thirty-eight, black cover, really hard to hi- find in high grade, and I'll never see it in the shops. I never see it just sitting in a back issue bin. People have them in their collections, or they've been lost, or they've been destroyed, and that's a hard book to find in, in any grade above like low. And it, it, you know, I think the last one I sold of that was a near mint, non graded, you know, non slab, near mint, $45 because I knew how rare it was. You know, it says in the guide three bucks, but I'm like, you're not going to find it anywhere else. This, yeah. it's, you know, it's, it's really hard to find a near mint. And somebody bought it because they, you know, they had sense because slabbed, <laughs> slabbed is a 9.8. That book now goes for 400 bucks. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's crazy. Well, fellas, I think that's going to kind of wrap us up. We're over the one hour point in this uh, issue of our episode of Slabbed and Raw. Had a fun time here. Want to remind the viewers, or if you're listening on the podcast, we've got an Instagram page or an Uh, Instagram account, Slabbed Raw, correct? Yep. If you have topics you want us to talk about, if they're they're hot topics in the moment, put them in there. If you have something that's a little bit more long term, you know, bigger picture stuff. Throw them into that Instagram account. If you have a, a something you have a question about, throw them in there, and we'd like to talk about them here on the on the program for you. Or potentially Pele or Yule or Doc can, can answer maybe some of your your collecting questions just on the spot there. Maybe they're not applicable to everybody, but we want you guys to be involved as well and, and just build up a, a nice collecting community where we can talk about this stuff, have a good time with the hobby, and, and really celebrate all the stuff we're we're doing and protect each other from all the. Uh, all the bad people out there that are trying to take our money, pay like God. Oh, yeah, be careful with those this predatory this predatory sellers out there, and even shops. You know, don't you know if they do they pull that kind of crap on you. They try to tell you, well, I need to check the price, you know, over here before you yeah. just 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 let them have it. You know, I mean, see, just let them have the comic. Don't know. Do you tell them have. slapped and raw said you could go stick it where the sun Thanks. don't shine. You yeah, need a kiss better your experience. Ass. That's not right, you know. And Do you, your job. We're not. Yule Carter from Fantastic Comics in Berkeley, California, said you're a fraud, sir. 
That's right. That's what you tell You're a fraud. fraud. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, and, you know, comics yep. are carny. You know, <laughs> <laughs> they are. And it doesn't and, stop with us. <laughs> <laughs> and I want to remind everybody again: buy those blue chips now. Buy those older comics. The you the books that you've really, really wanted. Buy them now because they're not going to get cheaper. Those those big blue chip collectible comics they're not going to get cheaper and in 40 years you're not going to see them in any private collections buy them now you reap the benefits from that don't let the big don't let the big tr- companies and stuff like that just just hoard them all away go get them don't now. mortgage your house doing it though that's don't no. put yourself in financial no. peril make sure that you have the means to do it no but if you sell have means, your comics to buy houses yeah yes yeah <laughs> like anything it. else to say fellas I'm, I think that uh, just uh, yeah, l- have a great <laughs> week. Enjoy the hobby. Uh, we've got so many topics to go over in future episodes, and uh, but if yeah, like you said, if you got other things you want us to talk about, anything that you want to know about, just hit us up on social media, or uh, or send us emails and stuff like. Just get in touch with us. We'll talk about your subject and uh, show us your collections too, because we love looking at those. Yeah, DMs are open. Yep. Yep. Slide in there. Don't say <laughs> Slime the DMs.